Okay, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you are either trying to do your project and you're turning it in late, or you did it, but you didn't give your grade score and you're trying to make up some points. So I'm going to quickly, if you follow through on this exercise, that will get you partway there. And then I will tell you what else you need to do if you want to even get more points. But the idea is there's a whole other video of me going through the rubric and explaining what uh, the draft should look like and what the final product, the, what I'll call the quiz, should look like. Uh, that you would give to the student. The student quiz is the one where mostly everything's blank. And the key, which is the probably where we're going to start, is filling all this out. Um, so if you do exactly what I do, this will get you partial credit, and then I will tell you what else you need to do to get more credit. Uh, and for people who are kind of uh, redoing their project, uh, the same applies. So just follow along, and then when you're done, you may end up doing this the second time on your own for more credit, and then there's one more little thing you have to do. So we know there has to be – oh, so first of all, what a lot of people left off on their uh, project was they just forgot to put this down at the bottom of both the key and of the uh, the student version, the quiz. Uh, and so on the, the student version, it should be blank because they're going to fill these in, but then on the, 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 the uh, teacher version, the, the key – uh, they're going to be filled in with examples. All right. So anyway, so first of all, draw a couple parallel lines. We know we have to have parallel lines. It's in the rubric. I don't think anybody left parallel lines out. Okay. So we're going to draw a couple parallel lines, and we're going to mark them as parallel with arrows, not tick marks, which some people did. And then I'm just going to draw a transversal through that. Okay. So that's kind of my start. I'm going to make this line a little bit longer because I'm going to do something down here. Okay. So that's my start. And uh, I'm going to, I know I need to have a triangle too, so I'm just going to add a triangle here. So if you want to draw this pretty much like I'm drawing it, like I said, you're going to do it once like me, and then depending on what you want to do, you may do it a second time on your own, depending on where you are. All right, uh, I'm going to label some of these points. So I'm going to label this A and B and C, and if you need to stop the video to watch me, you can. I'm going to call that point D. And I'm going to stop there. Okay. So the idea is here is I need, to, I need to get some kind of value to made up. This is an obtuse angle up here. So I'm going to say this is 100 degrees. Uh, I'm actually going to circle it. So I remember that's one I started with. That's one I made up. And then I'm even going to write it down here. I'm going to say, now, I need some more points up here. I'm going to call this angle e, uh, point E. And this is point F because now I can name that uh, EDF. EDF. And since it's the key, I'm doing the key first, I'm going to put everything down here. So this will be on both, these two things will definitely be on both the, the, the key and the student version. Uh, all right, so now that I know that, I can fill in some other angles. So like I know this has to be 100 because vertical angles are 100. I'm going to add another point out here. I'm going to call it G. Um, and so down here, I might say E, D, no, not D, B. This is a B here. BDG is equal to 100 degrees. Now, on the student version, that's going to be blank, and this is going to be blank. So when I recopy it, I'm going to leave those off. This is why I'm circling the ones to remember, like, which ones did I start with. Um, okay, this is if I'm doing the project from scratch. And once again, you're going to decide at the end whether you want to redo this project from scratch or not. Um, all right, and also, I might go ahead. That's, that's actually a vertical pair. So I'm going to put that example down here because this is my an example of a vertical pair is angle EDF and angle what we call it BDG. Okay, so that's me giving an example of that. There are other vertical pairs up there, but I only need to name one. Uh, these two got it, straight lines got to add up to 180. So that's 100. That's 80. And so once again down here, I'm going to put EDG. All right, I got to keep grabbing the wrong. EDG is equal to, and that's 80. Now, I'm going to stop putting these here. But the idea is, if this is my key, I'm going to have every single angle that's listed up here, written down here, but only a handful of them are going to be on the student version. Most of them are going to be blank. I'm not going to keep doing all these angles. But the idea also is that you can name a, you can name, you know, when I say which one's 80 degrees, you can say, oh, EDG is the one that's 80 degrees. Uh, which one is 100 degrees? You say, oh, well, I see BDG is 100 degrees. I also see B, uh, FDE. You know how to name it with three letters. It's always the middle letter 
The other two letters help you determine where it is on the intersection. All right, so we know this is 80. Um, these are corresponding angles here. Oh, we didn't do linear pair. Anytime I got a straight line, I got a linear pair. So like this 80 and this 100, it's a straight line. That's a linear pair. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that example down here. That's FDB. FDB. And the other one is BDG. BDG. That is, that's a linear pair. That's a linear pair. That's a linear pair. Um, okay. The, this 80 here, FDB, and this 80 down here are corresponding angles. I got parallel lines. I got a transversal. They're both lower left. They match up. That's what corresponding means. So I'm going to go ahead and write that last example there. Uh, I need another letter. Strangely, I'm going to make this I because I've got an invisible H that I know I'm going to want to add, but you could call it whatever you want to. But I need to name that. So I'm going to call that IBA. So I'm going to call that angle IBA. It's part of my corresponding pair. IBA matches up to FDB. FDB. So there's an example of a corresponding pair. And once again, on the student version, these will just be blank because the idea is you're going to give to them as a quiz. It will all look like this. And you're done. This is where we're going. And then just to tell you, part of the way you're going to get more credit is you're actually going to come in and fill this out completely with slightly different numbers here. Otherwise, it'll look pretty similar because this is going to show me that not only did I follow along, I understand what the heck's going on here. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's finish this up. So if this is 80, this has to be 80. This has to be 100. This has to be 100. I'm going to leave that blank out now. You'll see why in a minute. Now, I've got this triangle down here. I don't have enough information, so I need to make up another angle. I could make up this angle or this angle or this angle or this angle, but if I make up one of those, I can figure everything else out. So I'm going to make up another angle. I'm going to say this is 35 degrees. Okay, so down here on my key, I might say BCA is equal to 35, and this is one that I'm going to keep when I eventually ask questions, whereas like this angle down here, uh, BAC on the student version, it'll be blank because they can figure that out now. Because 135, it's got to add up to 180. So I think that's 50, no 55 or 45. Uh, 40. Is that right? 45, 45, 45 degrees. A little trouble there. That's right. 45 degrees. All right. Um, we are kind of done. Except for, um, obviously, once again, I haven't filled all these out yet. Um, there was one more requirement on the rubric. If you go back and read through the rubric carefully, and most people did this, but one of the things it says you should have a right angle in there somewhere. So I'm going to add one more triangle. This is where my invisible H was because I knew I was going to do this. I'm going to add one more here. I'm going to put a right angle there. I'm going to call this H. Uh, somewhere down here, I'm probably going to let the person know that um, what is that? BHD. BHD is equal to 90 degrees. Uh, so it's both here and there. And then at some point I might ask them, oh, what's angle FHB? Oh, I've got some new angles down here. This is why I didn't label this. So 80 and 90, this has to be 10. So I could ask them about HBD back, the student, as well as I could ask them this, which is going to be 90 which makes sense. These have to add up to 100 because this corresponding angle here before. Okay, I didn't mean to circle that. Uh, this is why, this is a little messy. This is why, this would probably actually be my draft if I was doing this from scratch. Okay, I think I'm about done. So you're going to finish filling this out. You're going to make sure this is all filled in. Um, did we miss anything? Add all the angle names. So all these angle names here, make sure they're here with the appropriate number down here, that's not quite finished. You've got your examples already. Oh, we didn't do segment ray and line. Segment, uh, let's see, uh, H, B is a segment. Okay, just from that point there to that point there. Uh, a ray could be from B out through A and keep going. It would express like from here through there and keep going. So I could say H, A, starts at H, goes through A and keeps going forever. And then a line, this line up here, there's lots of ways I can name it. I can name it FH or FD or HG. Um, but basically, I'm saying it's got those two points on it, H and G, and everything else on the line in both directions. So that captures kind of everything. All right. So if you turn that in, you're going to get some points for sure. 
Um, and then I am going to give you essentially a blank version of it with probably the numbers changed slightly. And you're going to fill this out. I might have the letters changed slightly too. It shouldn't really matter. So that's going to be worth more points. That will get you up to 60 of the 75 points. Um, that will also, if you are making up points, get you half your points up to 71. Okay, you can get up to an A minus uh, just by redoing this and then showing me that you know what's here. If you want more than 60 points, like you haven't done anything yet, it's like I don't, I'm not happy with a 60 out of 75, then you need to do the project. And the project could be essentially mine, but with different numbers. I'd rather you be more creative than mine. But at this point, I'm just like, you're already taking a hit for being late, but it's got to have different numbers. And it means you have to have both the, the student version, the, the key filled in, this is not quite filled in, plus the blank version. So it's more work. But you can get all the way up to 71 still, because I said the most I would take off for, uh, no. Oh, I got it. Not 71. Uh, I got to, let's see. I got to figure out my numbers, but you can, you can get up to an A minus still. Um, and then, so once again, go look at, I've, I've got these other examples online. Go look at my examples online. This is, this is printed online as well as there's a second video of me kind of going through the rubric, everything that's required. But I think we've done everything now. I've given you kind of a step-by-step -step example, but you can't get full credit just for copying this down. That will get you some coming in and showing me that you know it by filling this out with slightly different numbers and letters will get you a little bit more. Um, but then if you really want to get almost, uh, if you want to get an A, you got to do the project. Um, you'll lose a few points for being late, but if it's a perfect project, you'll still get a pretty decent grade. Okay. Thanks for watching.